We're joined now by a gentleman who knows all about the pressure cookers. He coached for a decade at Kentucky, won a championship, and he's still doing his thing. He's at Memphis, and uh, he's with us now. That is Coach Tubby Smith. Coach, how are you, buddy? Tiki and Tierney, what's happening? I'm well. I'm well. Just uh, glad to be with you guys. How you guys doing? Yeah, you, you should be doing well. Tiki just said during the break, he said, man, you know how much money Tubby's making at, the, at this age? I go, how much? You go, and he told me, and I don't want to embarrass yeah, you, but it's out there for public. Well, They're still man. doing all right there, Coach. Uh, boy. Well, I'm not making as money as you got. Money as you got. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's all good. I didn't realize, Coach, you were one of 17 kids, man. You grew up with a competitive background in your youth. Yeah. Yeah, I was very fortunate. I think it helped me. It's helped me in my career, you know, in the competition and throughout my college career, just in high school, you know. So, but I had twelve sisters and four brothers, so it was pretty competitive. Man, oh man. So what? You know, speaking of competitive juices, you know, we spent a lot of time on Bill Self, and you know, the the narrative here. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, his team has you know fallen short many times when they're supposed to do a lot more. I know we can simplify it. It's a lot deeper than that. But as a coach who's won, uh, Tubby. What is the difference when you go from the regular season or even into the conference tournament to the actual big dance and you have expectations? I'm sure the players get a little bit tight, but from the coaching seat, what is that like? Well, it's a matter of uh, preparation. You know, I think you can't put too much emphasis on, you know, it's a big jump. You know, the, the pressure cooker gets, you know, gets a little hotter. But, you know, always – you know, the greater the challenge, the greater the reward. I think also you don't want to tighten up. You want to sort of lighten up because now this is the icing on the cake. You know, if you you take Bill Self, 13 straight you know, Big 12 championships, unheard of. Yeah. So he has nothing to hold his head, you know, to be, you know, you know he won't have to defend anything. You know, and, and sometimes that particular day, uh, Tiki knows, you know, you can, be the, you can have the best players, but some days it's just not your day. And it's an opposing team that's that's really – uh, playing ex- extremely well, and that's what happened. I think in the Kansas situation, I don't think it's anything that that they did uh, poorly. Uh, I think it's more about what your opponent uh, did well. Yeah, and certainly Oregon is on a mission. Uh, and, you know, Dana Altman is one of the all-time great coaches. I mean, I think people don't realize how talented he is. I got to know Dana Altman when he was a head coach at Fairbury, Nebraska, at, at, at a junior college at Fairbury, Nebraska, when I ju- recruited a player from there back in the 80s. Wow, nah. and so so we knew he was a talented coach. Everywhere he's been, you know, whether it was at Creighton, Kansas State, wherever he's been, he's been a winner. Yeah, and you've been a winner everywhere you've been, and whether it's at Tulsa or Kentucky where you won a national championship. And when you look at this uh, this NCAA Final Four Sometimes we put too much emphasis on experience, right? This is a veteran team that's been here before, like North Carolina, but there's a bunch of them this year that haven't. Obviously, South Carolina and Gonzaga have never been here. I I wonder from a coaching perspective, is it easier if your team has experience or is it easier if they don't know what to be scared of? (laughs) That's a good point. You know, I don't have been there enough times to realize. Mm -hmm. You know, I was fortunate I took an experienced team a team that had been there three times prior, two times prior to me being the head coach. At, so they gave me, you know, the courage. And and they really, uh, in fact, I remember uh, the players at Kentucky, Alan Edwards, who's now the head coach at Wyoming, Jeff Shepard, Cameron Mills, they were the tri-captains, and they said, Coach, we're going to introduce you to the president. I said, what are you talking about? Because I was being, I just followed Rick Pitino at Kentucky, and he had just lost in the NCAA championship game to to Arizona. So now they had the experience of being there, and I hadn't. So I was a lot more comfortable because they were saying, hey, we're going to take you to the White House. <laughs> and it, I didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> so I think experience may, is a major factor. That's why I think North Carolina has a has a real leg up on everybody else in this tournament because they were there last year, and certainly that left a bitter taste in their mouth the way they lost the game to Little Nova. So I know Roy Williams has been there numerous times with North Carolina, but – People like Oregon, you know, Oregon is hungry. You know, Gonzaga is playing well, and certainly South Carolina with Frank Martin is all on a roll. Man, how do you prepare for uh, whether it's West Virginia, who obviously is out, or or Frank Martin, South Carolina team, a team that's playing that kind of defense? How do you prepare for that? Well, we played them. I'm glad you asked because we played them in December, and in South Carolina, but they didn't have Cinderius Thornton, who was the best, who was best player in that league. Uh, and that, that probably helped us 
but but our guys were defending extremely well, and I knew Frank's teams are very, you know, they're they're in your face, very physical defensive team, and in a short in a game like that, like you know, for instance, the Florida game, you know, even though they had split during the season. You knew it was who could will, who could force or impose their will on their opponent, and and certainly the Gamecocks do that uh, in a way that no one else does. I think in, in college basketball, certainly no one. They'll be the best defensive team of the four teams uh, in this tournament. I think, oh, and I hey. think that's why mm-hmm. uh, they go. That's why they've been able to advance and get to the Final Four. It's amazing how they play. Took it to Tubby Smith, incredibly. Yeah. I'm obviously you know from Kentucky, but. Tulsa, which has uh, been a sporting ground for many head coaches, uh, you know, many, many, Bill Self, one of them. Yes. Uh, obviously, Minnesota yes. with, with the Gophers and Texas Tech, and right now he's with Memphis. So, yeah. Coach, been around. Yeah, Coach, yeah. Uh, I mean, Coach were, knows his stuff. You were an assistant in South Carolina. What's that fan base like? I mean, because we, we hear about it, we see about it, we, yes. we hear people talk oh. about it, but I mean, they're intense, man. They always have been. I was there back with George Felton was the head coach, and Frank McGuire had, had, uh, was still around. The, the famous Frank McGuire oh, who yeah. won a national championship with the North Carolina, with the Tar Heels back in 57 when they beat Wilt Chamberlain in the championship game. Uh, so uh, I was fortunate to be around the Gamecocks and their fans. Their football has always been, been – uh, football fan base has always been great. Uh, you know, and But their basketball has always been – been great. They they've been supportive. They've won baseball championships. Now, you know, their women's basketball team is outstanding. Uh, and now Frank Martin, what he's done has just been remarkable there. So I, I'm I'm happy to say that I was a part of it at one point in time. Took them. To, we went to two NCAA tournaments while we were there, and won NIT uh, for those five years from from uh, for three years for '86 to '89. But it was so I was very fortunate. And you're right. They've got a a great fan base. I've been hearing from a few of them myself about, hey, coach, can we? Can you help me with tickets? I'm saying, I can't really do that. <laughs> hey, they, but they, they, but they, I still have a lot of friends and, uh, and folks here. In fact, my wife's family is from that area. Yeah, no, they think you have a connection. You're going to get hit up at this time of year. Hey, look, you, yeah, you, you, yeah. <laughs> you just took the job. I'm really, and, I'm really happy for Frank Martin and his staff and, and, and the Gamecock. Yeah, no, we had him on last week, and that was the first time I had talked to him. I think I don't know if BT had either, but he was – he was interesting to listen to. You can see how he gets his kids motivated. And speaking of that, you just took an, you just taking the job in Memphis. This was your first season. You go nineteen and thirteen right. in the regular season, tied for fifth in the conference. But you've you've been a lot of places, and you've taken I think almost everywhere you've been to the NCAA tournament. What's it going to take at Memphis uh, to get that done for you? Well, it's just going to take a, another year. <laughs> We've got a you know, we're, certainly we took over the program. We had seven scholarship players and we had to sign two. We, we brought in two fifth year players who are now graduated. So now we're back to just seven guys on scholarship. And so we have to have a, we signed three guys early. So it's all about uh, number one, recruiting. It, it takes time for players to, to, uh, to let go of the old and pick up the new. Cause you know, for most of them, we still have a very young team, all five, of all five of our starters, we could possibly be back. Dedrick Lawson led us now you know, in scoring and in rebounding. He's the young man that may put his name in the in the draft again this year. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But we're uh, we think we're we're well positioned to be uh, one of the teams that are playing next year in this tournament. Uh, and I, I like the players we recruited and the players that we're recruiting now. So I, I think we're and the way you do it is you have to first establish your philosophy and your system. And that yeah. takes a year or two to do that. Yeah, and then you got to get all the guys recruit. to buy in, right? Yeah, you got everybody to buy in. So they have to forget the old and, and learn the new, which takes which is a, takes some time. Yeah. And we, that's what we're on our – we're on pace to change the, the culture and get things right. Well, you have the pedigree and you have the championship in, in 98 <laughs> to, to, to show them. Uh, you teamed up with the NABC and Dove Men Plus Care. Tell us what you have going on around March Madness and how uh, us us men uh, can be the right example. Well, obviously it's about respect. You know, respect one another, respect yourself, respect your opponent, and I think that's the key is, is when you are, are competing, you know there's going to be uh, in the heat of the battle things can happen, and certainly in the stands. It's more about our players establishing the uh, you know, the tone. You know, if someone falls, go help them up. And I think that's where 
this this dove, uh, you know, the real strength manifesto is important. Where a dove men plus is a big part of, and teaming up with the National Association of Basketball Coaches is just another way for us to communicate and to exemplify what the standards are and what what teamwork and and what about and, and about just respecting your opponents sportsmanship uh, and that's that's why it gives us another and that's why it's so important that we team up with 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 an organization like Dove and uh, Dove Men Care and that it means so much and uh and again real winners win on the court and off the court uh, so uh, and that's that's we know that we are a window to our universities you know this final four is an opportunity for us to dis- to put on display what you know, especially with things that are going on in the world and in our country today uh, about partnerships about sharing about caring uh, for one another and i just think this is another way with this real Smith manifesto and 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 just the I know there's energy. You'll see some great fans. I know the Gamecocks have great fans in the stands. Certainly the Tar Heels, Gonzaga, Oregon Ducks, they'll have. And I know that they want to see their teams play well and win, uh, but they want to do it the right way. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a way to win. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and then you have to respect uh, the, the system and the process. It's a great initiative. Coach Smith, really good uh, really good catching up. Dove's doing good things. We'll tweet out some of the information for you. And uh, God bless, buddy. We'll talk to you down the road. Thank you very well, much, we Coach. we appreciate you guys. Thank you, Tiki. Thank you, Brandon. See you, buddy. He-